I'm really getting used to this theme. Hello, hello, and welcome again to another edition of Things We Said Today. This is our weekly show in which we talk about what's going on in the world of the Beatles. Newswise, Ken Michaels here, known from my Beatles radio program called Every Little Thing, being joined by my co-host, my buddy in crime here, Mr. Beatles examiner himself, Steve Marinucci. Hey, Ken. Hey, everybody. Welcome back, Ken. How was your uh, vacation? I had a fine vacation. I, I spent a lot of time in San Diego with some friends, friends of yours, too. Uh-huh. Uh, Dave Humphreys, who was a guest on our show. He was a friend of Tony Sheridan's and, right. and uh, did some recording with him. And, oh, cool. uh, and Dave's wife, Robbie. And also, uh, I spent some time with a guy named Wolfgang, who uh, was Tony Sheridan's keyboard player the last uh, 20 20 years or so, and um, did an interview with him, which is soon going to be on my website. Good. So it's it's kind of interesting, because it's not just about Tony with the Beatles. It's more, you know, because people don't really know that much about Tony Sheridan after the Beatles. Right. There's a whole whole history there of stuff that he did outside the Beatles that uh, is quite interesting, yeah. And maybe with his passing, that will give cause for more information coming out, more books... Well, there is already projects. one book out, and hopefully, you know, like you say, that now that he's now that he's gone, that maybe there will be more information out there now. Hmm. So. And I also should give a shout out to Stephen Kalinich, who I spent some time with as well. We all hung out together. Stephen Stephen's best known for his association with the Beach Boys, and he's written songs with uh, with Brian and with Dennis, and uh, just had a great time. Good in San Diego. But our show this time out has to do with. The latest on Mr. McCartney, who has just started his new Out There tour, and he did his first show in Brazil. And uh, first, first two shows, actually. Yeah. He's done both of them, and he's there. Uh, yeah, first two shows, and actually there's a third one. As we are taping this, there's a third one tomorrow, which will be, you know, history by the time you get everybody's well, by the, hearing this. By the time this gets posted, it's going to be a week later, and it's going to be right. four more shows or something. But... Um, this is going to be a fun show because we're going to be talking about Paul's playlist, what he uh, performed in Brazil, and I'm sure for the most part it'll be the same from show to show, although he does make some changes here and there, but not a lot. But um, I tried to do something that was almost impossible to do. I wanted to go into this show not knowing his playlist, which is... uh, you know, when you've got friends who are Beatle fans, mm-hmm. people who listen to your show, they all want to tell you. It's almost impossible to go on Facebook. In fact, I saw this picture that read Paul Setlist. As soon as I went on Facebook, didn't even have to click on a link. <laughs> and it's right there. And I'm saying, no, 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 I don't want to know. I want to wait till I talk about it with you. So there'll be an element of surprise because this is really the first time that I'm hearing this. And uh, we'll get our reaction as to... Paul's set list, and uh, I'm curious to know what you think, if you're pleased with it, and and uh, also what our fans think. And okay. I encourage them all to write in. Yep. Now, do you want me to go through, I mean, do you want me to read you the, the list in order, or do you want me to read you first the songs that were new, that were not played on the last tour? You, you tell me well, how you want. Well, why don't you just go through the playlist, but why don't you tell me before we do that, how many songs did he do in this show that he's never done before? That he's never done before. Um, there are nine songs that he had not sung during um, last year's uh, On the Run tour. Nine songs. Okay. Well, I'm pretty familiar with everything that he's done in his solo career, so what he has done and what he hasn't done. So. And uh, uh, let, me count, let me count here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them were Beatles songs. Okay. Oh, and three of them were solo songs. We'll st- let's start. He opened the show in Belo Horizonte with Eight Days a Week. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, it doesn't surprise me so much that he's doing that song. I think it would surprise me more that he opened with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too, actually, because it doesn't sound like a... And I haven't, I haven't yet, yet heard the... I haven't uh, gone to YouTube to listen to the, the videos, but... It doesn't sound on its face like a real strong song. However, someone who was listening to the 
who got to hear the rehearsals in Los Angeles sent me a report that I published yesterday that has some information on what things were like. And one of the things that my source said was that everything that they played in the rehearsals, they've done so far. There hasn't been anything, there were no songs that I got information of that they rehearsed that they have yet to do. And okay. actually the set list has stayed the same for the first two shows, which is an interesting idea. We're talking rehearsals. The pre-LA, uh, I mean the LA rehearsals, and there were two rehearsals. There were one out near Burbank Airport, which is where they were next door to the Rolling Stones. Right, I heard about that. And then they moved to an, another location where the Rolling Stones actually came into the same place after they left. So that's what's happening. That, that, that's what happened there. Okay. Well, eight but days a week is, is a very interesting choice. Okay. And I'm not really shocked because Paul has brought that song up in interviews, and maybe I'm reading too much into this, but sometimes when he mentions certain songs, I get the feeling they may be favorites of his. Right. You know, every now and then he'll bring up I'll Get You mm -hmm. as a favorite B-side. Well, yep. he did that song in yeah, 2005, so it wasn't as much of a shock. But I think some people would be surprised with Eight Days a Week only because John sang the lead. Right. But it was more, at least from what we know, it was more of, a, of an equal collaboration. Mm -hmm. Okay, next was Junior's Farm. Good. I'm glad that he's keeping that. Which is, yep. Next is uh, was All My Lovin'. Not a surprise at all. No. I mean, that's, yeah. that's one of those songs, and if you follow what Paul's done on most of his tours, he has a certain pacing, and you know, that third or fourth song is usually a, a very strong, recognizable, everybody get up, Beatles song. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like Got yep. to Get You Into My Life was, you know. Right. Next Next is one of the new songs. Ready? Yeah. Listen to what the man says. All right. Oh, am I happy? Are you? <laughs> I am a yeah, happy and man. A lot of, that was that was one that a lot of people were hoping for, and he and he heard them. And and in fact, you know, when I wrote up the set list, I said he's been listening because there's been a lot of clamor for some of these songs. Well, there was a survey that was done. And mm -hmm. I'll give credit here because uh, last year or, or two years ago, it was probably last year, when I went to the Fest for Beatle fans, they did a survey that they presented there of songs that Paul has never done live or hasn't done for a long time that they'd want to see him do. And number one was listen to what the man said. Well, they, he heard that. He, heard he that. must have. It he must have gotten to him. Yep. I'm okay. glad. He's paying attention. Next, uh, let me roll it. Okay. <laughs> Next. Well, what are your feelings about that? Um, the tempo from Listen to What the Man Said to Let Me Roll It is a little kind of doesn't mesh as well as I would have liked. But, hey, again, I have not seen the show, and I, I can sit here and, and give my opinion. And, but in the, in the context of the show, it's, it's all different, you know. I mean, however they decide to do it. Okay. So... A paperback writer is next, which is always a good choice. I, I like that. that's a you know very, very energetic song. It's interesting to me that he moved that up to the early part of the show. But right, all right, right. Next, he slows it down and goes to my Valentine. Okay, good. I'm glad that he's you know continuing to play that song and playing you know anything from and, Kisses um, on the Bottom. By the way, I did. I had a story, another story yesterday that. Uh, a reporter in Brazil sent me that she caught Nancy and Paul signaling to each other, you know, little kind of love, little romantic messages and hand signs between them. Well, good. So that was, and she and she actually got pictures of Nancy of Nancy watching the show and them with Nancy, which was kind of cute. Mm -hmm. And then, um, okay, so next, after that, 1985. Good, I I'm glad that he's kept that in. Okay. The next couple are, are repeats. Uh, Long and Winding Road is next. Uh-huh. And that's one that um, somebody commented to me on Facebook that they'd wish he'd get rid of. And I, I, putting it so far up in the in the set, that's kind of strange, actually. But, hmm. um, okay. Maybe I'm Amazed is next. Okay. Which I uh, I like I li really like that song so I'm glad to see that. Well, it's a great live song and he had the hit with it as a live recording. Right. Hope of Deliverance is next. Good. I mean, he's done that off and on. 
yep. recently. So I'm glad that he's he's making this. I hope this is, you know, uh, you know, a mainstay in his set list. Yeah, actually, I do I do like that song. I, I do like that song. Oh, next two are new, and here's one. The first one is "We Can Work It Out." That's not new. Well, new <laughs> for the new for the, they didn't do it. He didn't do it last year. Oh, okay. He didn't I do mean, it last year. He has done it. He did it. He in has. The, uh... He has done it, but he didn't do it last year. Yeah. I'm, when I say new, I mean new as of as far as uh, you know last year's tour. And next after that is um, another day. Great. Which he hasn't was, done which, that since '93. Right. He hasn't done that for for quite a while. Okay. Um, I'm psyched about that. I'm and psyched. I love her. Okay. Good. Blackbird, which he's done a lot. Mm-hmm. Here today, which he's done a lot. Okay. Okay. Well, here's one of the huge surprises, and I mean huge. Your mother should know. All right. I'm very glad. Are you? you? Know, I'm very glad. Yes. Yeah, I know. I, I, I am too. Actually, about that. That's uh, that's one. I'm very. That's uh, that's a wonderful choice. Do you know how many great Beatles songs he still hasn't done? Right. <laughs> you know, and uh, and it certainly wouldn't bother me if he did songs that the others sang lead to. It's not like right. he has to keep it to his own. But yeah, I'm glad he's doing that one. Okay, N- Lady Madonna next. Okay. Next song is All Together Now. It's about time. Yeah, that's all that really I have is. to say. You know, it, it's that's one of those songs. It's a great sing along song. Mm-hmm. It's like, why did he take so long to do Oh Blah Dio Blah Da? I mean, that's a that's a natural. Mm-hmm. You know, so all together now is is pretty much the same thing. It's the, one of those songs that everybody in the crowd's going to sing along to. Right, right. Next is uh, Mrs. Vanderbilt, which okay. I hope he keeps in that in that set forever. <laughs> forever. Yeah, no, I really, I really love that. I, I, it, that worked out so well. Um, it's a great, such a great song. Uh, Eleanor Rigby is next. Uh huh. Okay, here comes one of the next huge surprises. Being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. Oh my God! <laughs> now that I would never expect. True, true. That, oh uh, my yeah, that was God. really, that was really a shock to me too. I was like, oh, really? Seriously? There's one other song that's coming up soon that's an even bigger shock, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. But uh, that was, I think, the second biggest shock of the, of the set. Something. Okay. Obladi Oblada. Okay. Band on the Run. Here's the one that floored me, completely floored me, because I heard about this. There were Some of this stuff leaked out in the, um, in the um, sound checks, and, and we didn't know if... This was because I talked about this with a, with a few people, and we weren't sure whether to believe it, but it turned out to be true. High, high, high. All right. <laughs> I know. You know. I mean, it, that's such a great song. I'm so glad he did. It. Um, well, you know, that's that shouldn't be a shocker. You know, that is a song that should have he should have continued playing throughout all of his tours. Right. And it's a great song, like the Wings Over America tour, to be close to the end of the show. Right. Yeah, you know, definitely. No, that doesn't really surprise me. I'm super glad that he brought it back. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, there's one more new song. It's coming up. Uh, it's coming up. Uh, next one is "Back in the USSR," which is always great. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Let it be. Okay. And then he. And then of course he's he's into the encore here. "Live and Let Die." Uh huh. Uh, hey Jude. Oh, actually, that's not the encore. The encore is coming up. Okay. Hey Jude. Then we go into the encore. Day Tripper. Mm-hmm. And another big shock. You ready? Lovely Rita. <clears throat> Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, really, I think I should really really shocked you then. Uh yes. 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 Believe me, I'm I'm very glad about that one too. Yeah, I mean that's uh, quite a surprise. That's quite a surprise. That's not one that I ever thought that he would be doing. Um and get back. Okay. Uh, yesterday. Elter, Elter Skelter, and then the, the Golden Slumbers carry that weight at the end. Medley at the end. All that's right. It. That's the show. Uh, very, very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> and like I said, he did not change the set list to the second show, which makes me wonder if he has decided to go with a straight set list. The, you know, pretty close to it. Uh, it's we'll too see. soon to tell. We'll know tomorrow night. 
You know, the, the last few years, Paul, if you've seen like two shows in a row, he will take one song, take it out the next show, and, and replace it with another one. I've just seen a face gets replaced by I'm Looking Through You, something like that. Right. So that could still happen. I mean, the band knows these songs. Right. It doesn't really take that much to switch a song here and there. And for the fans that go to more than one show, and there are plenty of them, oh, yeah. you know, it's a treat to not see the exact same show. Sure. But um, this is very interesting. It's definitely interesting. I'm, I'm pleased in a lot of ways, and in, in some ways I'm not. But then I'm one of those people that you'll never make happy completely. What are you not pleased with? Still... Uh, there are certain Beatles songs that he he doesn't have to do every single time. Yeah. I mean, long and, as and, much long as, and Winding Road, uh, I think, is definitely one of them. Yeah, let me just say one thing. Go ahead. I love Here Today. I think it's a great tribute. You can do so many tributes to John besides that song. And I know that's his own personal tribute. He wrote it for him. Mm -hmm. You could do any John Lennon song, Beatles or solo. I loved when he did that medley back in uh, Liverpool in 1990 when he did Help, Strawberry Fields Forever, and Give Peace a Chance. Right. That was wonderful. I wish he would give here today a rest. You know, and it's the same thing with something. Do you know how many great George Harrison songs he could do as a tribute to George? Yeah, I, uh, I'm not in complete agreement with you on here today because uh, I really like the song. In fact, I was listening to tug of war this morning and i really like that i'll tell you there is one song on tug of war that i really wish he would do and that's ballroom dancing oh, i definitely. absolutely adore that song and i really wish he would do that well look the the simple fact of the matter is he has such a huge catalog he can't oh, get to do everything that we'd like for him to do and by all means i love the song here today don't get me wrong it's not a mm -hmm. question of liking the song or not Right. It's just a question of doing something else after all these years. Right. He's been doing here today for the last 10 years, yeah. 10 plus years now. Switch it up a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I, when I say there's so many great John songs, there's so many great George songs, I, rem I remember when he did All Things Must Pass as a tribute to George. Right. What's wrong with bringing that back or doing anything else from the Beatle catalog that's a George song? I would love to see him do Taxman. And then do the lead guitar solo, as he did on the record. Mm. I mean, that could be just as much of a tribute to George as something. Sure. I mean, something is one of the greatest love songs of all time, period. There's no question about it. But there's so many other great songs you could do for John and for George. Right. Well, the tour is just starting, and, and you know, we'll know more, you know, as it progresses as to what he's going to do. And, and uh, I mean, he may surprise us all again. Maybe he's going to, you know, maybe he's got a whole bunch of stuff in the wings but uh according to the person that sent me the information who heard some of the rehearsals they said that um the songs he did in in uh Bello Horizonte and Guyania were the same so the two set lists the first two nights stayed the same so we'll see what happens okay well when i look at this set list to me the big shockers are the Beatles songs there's really nothing from the solo careers that shock me hi 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 doesn't shock you that shocked me he should have been doing that song all these years. It's I'll one of those songs one. that should that should have been a staple of his of his of his tours. It's a great rocker. You know, everybody can get up and sing to that song. A lot of people know it. it was a top ten hit. It should have been one of those songs that he kept doing all these years. And yeah, and I, uh, but I will say that when the initial sound check reports came out and that song was in it, uh, you know, I said that's fantastic. And what's interesting was that. The word was that uh, they weren't going to release the sound check because it would spoil some of the surprises. So everybody is kind of was kind of prepared for what was coming, but it, nobody believed it. Nobody was sure until the first set list came through, and once it did, everybody, the internet reaction was like astounding. Everybody was cra was going crazy that hmm. it was what it was. Yeah. Well, overall, looking at this, I, I you know I'm quite happy. So am I. You know, but I'll say what I've been saying <laughs> since I started doing Beatles shows. I wish he would do more solo music. You know, it's just, it's so difficult because his catalog is so massive. And as I've said many times, you can never go wrong with a Beatles song. Well, I think that's the, uh, the whole situation right there is that he, like, and Ringo 
both know that there are songs that they have to do. I think, especially in Paul's case, not so much in Ringo's case. But well, there Paul's are songs in, in Paul's solo career that he has to do. He always does Ban on the Run. He always does Live and Let Die. He always does Jet. Actually, he's not doing Jet. No, he's not doing Jet. No, and he always he d- doesn't always do Band on the Run. He's There have been shows when he has not done it. Really? Um, I don't remember any. I mean full shows from his tours. Band on the Run's been there. Every, well, I'm talking about since it was released, not the early Wings tours. Mm, well... I mean, Since Rings Over America, has, I think he's done that in every tour. There's staples. There's staples. I mean, he hasn't done he hasn't done Day Tripper every every time. No, we only started doing that in recent years. Right. So I'm I'm very pleased. Day Tripper is a song that I I, I always wanted him to do, and that would yeah, be I a mean, great that would be a great opener too. I don't think he even does get. I don't think he's even done Get Back every single time. He hasn't. He hasn't. But in recent years, he's been doing it on on most of the tours. And Helter Skelter is another one that he hasn't always done. No, that's another one that he's done in recent years. He wasn't right. doing it in the 70s and the 80s and and the 90s, too. I mean, there's no, you know, if you're looking for a perfect set list, it's not going to happen. Oh. And, you know, it's just, a, you know, he does, whatever he does, there's going to be some that you're going to go, well, why didn't he do that, you know, and... and I mean the mixture. The mixture is really good. He doesn't. He doesn't play the the deep cuts game. And actually, I'm kind of glad he does not. Why? Because there are so many you know well known Beatles songs that if you start going into really obscure stuff, you know there are people. Uh, people are going to not be. I, I don't think are going to go for that. Um, it's different. For example, with the Beach Boys, Beach Boys fans love the deep cut stuff, the obscure stuff. Um, well, I, I, I completely disagree with you there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's you're going to find a lot of McCartney fans that want to hear deep cuts. I wouldn't go heavy on the deep cuts, but I'd certainly acknowledge those fans that want to hear them. Mm. And with the Beatles, you know, you've got so many great songs. And as I just said, Paul doesn't have to do just the songs that he sang lead to. I mean, is there a deep cut with the Beatles? There really, there hardly is anything that is that can, that can be considered a deep cut depends on what level of fan you're talking about there are some fans out there that basically know the hits and not much more than that well yeah you know i mean but i'm talking about the general more than the general fan uh you know the the casual fan the i think i don't know i don't think there are that many casual Beatles fans maybe i'm you know maybe it's because you know i talk to other you know i talk to people you know all the time that aren't but seems like there aren't as many casual Beatle fans as there are, you know, more dedicated Beatle fans. And, and uh, so... Well, you know, I'm, I'm happy that he's addressing certain wing songs like Hi, 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 and definitely doing Listen to What the Man Said Again. Mm-hmm. Uh, the big shockers for me, definitely number one on the list is being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. I would never expect him to do that. When I, when I think of Paul possibly doing a John song or a song that is so immediately identified with John from the Beatle days, he's always loved Strawberry Fields Forever. Right. I know that he loves Eye on the Walrus. You know, he's defended the Magical Mystery Tour film by saying it's the only place where you can see us do Eye on the Walrus. He brings up Tomorrow Never Knows every now and then, especially for his pride in the fact that he brought in the whole idea of backwards tape, tape loops for that song. I can easily hear him do Tomorrow Never Knows. In concert, but really? I wouldn't. I wouldn't think of being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, though. I really like that "Strawberry Fields Forever" that he that medley. And oh, I, that was great. I, actually, I would love to see him do "Strawberry Fields Forever." That would be uh, pretty amazing. Uh huh. He's talked about "Girl" upon occasion. Mm. You know, he loves the fact of you know the the heavy breathing in the song. Right. I think he he really appreciates. He loves that. He loves that particular song. There are certain John songs that I could hear him do. Many years ago, he said he'd like to have a stab at "Beautiful Boy," so do <laughs> it. <laughs> I'd love do to, it. I mean, that would be that would be quite interesting to see him do that. Yeah, but um, another day for me was the absolute highlight of the 1993 tour, and I loved a lot of the songs that he did from from off the ground. But another day, I think his voice sounded phenomenal. In '93, on most of the sh- of the shows, and uh, I'm so glad that he that he's bringing that back. Yeah, eight days a week. Like I said, it's not as much of a shocker to me. It's more a shocker that he would open with it. Um, your mother should know. You know, I'm I'm glad. You know what's really interesting mm. is the fact that aside from you gave me the answer, 
Paul has never done any of that dance hall stuff live. Mm-hmm. You know, he never did When I'm 64 live. He never has done Honey Pie live. He Honey hasn't Pie, done I any... think, would be a, a pretty difficult. When I'm 64 would be, would be easier. I'm Honey just Pie saying. Be... I'm just saying in general, he doesn't mm-hmm. uh, tend to do those kind of songs as a live performance. Yeah. You know, Baby's Request, one of those songs he doesn't choose to do live. You know, I'm just saying those particular songs that harken back to the 30s and 40s, he will not do those songs live, but this is the first time he's doing Your Mother Should Know. Altogether now, to me, it's a natural, you know? Mm-hmm. Just say, why haven't you done that all these years? Yeah, you're right, and and uh, you can just hear the audience going crazy for that one. In fact, um, altogether now would be... That should be moved towards the end of the concert. Yeah, I'm actually surprised. Yeah, I'm actually surprised it's in the middle. I mean, there's a few things that could be moved around, uh, and that would be that would definitely be one of them. And uh, "Lovely Rita" is a nice. It's a nice surprise. I'm not shocked. I'm really glad he's doing it, and I hope he does that same bass line <laughs> that he mm-hmm. did on the album. But uh, yeah, it's about time that he did that too. See, I, I think. Switching the two positions of those two songs would be a good idea. A lovely read, it doesn't seem like it should be at the end of the show mm. to me. Uh, well, Paul has usually been a master at pacing. That's you know? true. He that's knows true. where to play songs, so this is a little bit surprising. But overall, I'm very pleased, and I don't want any of the fans to get the wrong idea about what I said before. I'm going to support Paul McCartney if he did a concert and he sang yesterday 30 times. <laughs> I'm just happy that he's out there doing anything because, well, seriously, it, it's a gift at this point. Right. You know? It, it, he, yeah, and especially, I mean, he's still doing three-hour shows. I mean, good grief. Yeah, you know, you he's know, pushing Ringo's 71. three-hour shows, but, I mean, uh, very few artists are out there plugging away with the kind of shows that he's doing. So, uh, yeah. this is this is astounding. This is amazing. You know, at this point, whatever Paul and Ringo give us are bonuses. You know, I'm sure that they both know that there are so many people in the world who are now just discovering the Beatles, young fans. Right. And this is the only chance they're ever going to have of seeing any of them. Right. With John and George not here. I mean, yes, you can see Beatles tribute bands and they're wonderful in their own way, but there's nothing like the real thing. So right. the, mere, the mere fact that they're still doing anything at all and that Paul is giving you two and a half hours to three hours is amazing unto itself. I just, as someone, and I realize that you may not feel this way about Paul, but I don't look at the Beatles as being Beatles first. You know, after all these years, 50 years of music, 40 years of which have been solo music, more than that now. There's so much that they've done. You know, 80% of their catalog overall is solo music. I think of them as great artists first and Beatles second. And I realize that that's kind of a radical statement to say because I don't look at them as Beatles first, and yes, they had some solo songs that were very good. It's an, it's a, that, that actually is a perspective that, you know, you could probably talk about. You know, we could do a whole show on that. But um, Well, it's different when you've grown up and right, you've listened and, to and everything. Yeah, I, I mean, I went through it. As I was telling somebody on the phone yesterday. I mean, they were asking me how you know how I discovered the Beatles, and I said, you know, hey, I was I was watching Ed Sullivan show. I still remember that clear as a bell, laying on the floor in the living room, watching watching the black and white TV and watching them on the screen. And you know, yeah. Well, I think a lot of people don't realize that in the '70s, in particular, when the Beatles were doing so well with their solo music. There were a lot of young kids that grew up on that first. Mm-hmm. And then from listening to Wings or George's spiritual stuff for All Things Must Pass or John's solo music or the Ringo album, then they discovered the Beatles. It right. wasn't always Beatles first. So there is that generation of people who grew to appreciate the Beatles from the solo stuff first. And there is one final thing I want to say, because when I look at this set list, I still think that it's, too beetle heavy for me but believe me i like i said i will support paul no matter what he does but there's one listener that i had going back to the 80s when i was doing my show in new jersey who was born in 1973 Mm -hmm. and he grew up hearing solo music in the 70s and 80s from that he became a beetle fan he didn't get to go to the wings over america tour because he was only three at the time but he's been to every mccartney tour since then from 89 90 on right and a few years ago 
We were at the same show in Philadelphia where Paul opened with Venus and Mars Rock Show. He also did Letting Go. And it was around that time, I think he was bringing in 1985, and he did Ram On and all this solo stuff. And there was a, a decent amount of solo music there in that show. And he said to me something that will always stick with me. He said, this is the first time I've ever been to a Paul McCartney show where I felt it was a Paul McCartney show and not a Beatles tribute. Hmm. So, you know, there's no question that the Beatles were amazing as a group. And for so many people in the world, especially many that are listening right now, there's nothing that will ever compare to that. But if you study their whole body of work, there's so much more great music that they've done on their own, which unfortunately doesn't get the exposure that it deserves. And on the one hand, I will be so grateful to Paul for doing this show. For my particular taste, I think I'm probably in a minority. It should be more like one-third Beatles in, in, in a Paul McCartney show when you consider how huge his catalog is. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing a show and you're selling to, you're playing in front of 40,000, 50,000 people, you can't get away with too much music that the average person doesn't know. Right, and I think that's the reason why there's all the Beatles stuff, and that's why I kind of look at it as, you know, I'm glad it's Beatle heavy. Well, I think your tastes are far more conservative than mine. <laughs> Ooh, there's, there's a word I don't hear very often. Um, not with you. I'm not saying politically. Don't get but, the wrong but, idea. Don't get offended now. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's funny that, funny that we talk about Paul being doing a Beatle tribute set because a rock critic I know whose name I won't mention on the air, but who would be known to a lot of people, once told me that Paul McCartney was the best Beatle, Beatle tribute group there was. Right, I've heard that too. Yeah. So You know, and I, when I go to see Paul McCartney, I'm not going to see a Beatle. I'm going to see a great artist who at one time was in the Beatles. Mm -hmm. And that's just how I go about, you know, all the work that I do on the Beatles. Right. So... See, now I'm, I'm glad to, to hear all the Beatles songs because, number one, you know, we don't have John, we don't have George. Ringo only does a limited number of Beatles songs, so who else do we have besides Paul? We don't. So I'm glad that he does all the... But, but you know, you, no, you have a good point that... He, He's done know, over 30 albums, Steve. Right. No, I know that. And, and <laughs> that's, th a that's a lot of saying. music. You have a, you, there's a whole lot of stuff. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised that there wasn't kind of a... Um, a section relating to Wings Over America in there. That's true. That's that's kind of a surprise, and that was something that a lot of people were expecting, and it didn't happen. So, mm. but who knows? Maybe something. You know, maybe we're since we're getting close to the the reissue, maybe you know, cl or closer to the reissue. Uh, you know, as we're taping this, as the date we're taping this, maybe that will happen uh, at some point. But who knows? Okay. Well, that will put the show to a close. And uh, this was a great conversation. It was. That was that was good. Okay. So if any of you would like to get in touch with us, you can write to us through our email address, which is Things We Said Today Radio, radio Show. show. <laughs> you had to make it so long. At gmail dot com. And uh, anyone that wants to know more about my radio program, Every Little Thing, which is syndicated on almost twenty stations in the country and can also be heard as a live broadcast on WNHU which can be streamed at WNHU.net Wednesdays from 8 to 10 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, go to my website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. Find out more information all about it. And to get in touch with you, they can do what? They can look, at, look me up on Examiner.com as the Beatles Examiner. I'm also on Facebook under my own name. I have you know, a Beatles Examiner page also, and I've actually put up a Paul McCartney tour news page that uh, I've linked to, I've been linking to the bottom of mo of most of my articles, uh, where people can talk about the tour and and uh, get news about the tour and and all sorts of things. So that's okay. happening now too. What's the name of that page? It's called Paul McCartney 2013 Tour News. There we go. <laughs> you like long titles. I like I like long titles. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So. For things we said today. This is Ken Michaels thanking you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>